I had just done a gambit recently. Sorry. Kyle Rayner has a soft spot in my heart in that uh, I got to design his costume back in the day. Yeah, I'm going to draw the, the costume I designed, <laughs> and uh, that the, the first thing that kind of made me think, the first thing that kind of popped in my head, and it was kind of weird, uh, when I was doing that DC Daily, I, no, it was a DC stream that Kevin Smith hosted, kind of talking about the service, they brought Terry Hatcher on, and they were talking about how um, that uh, sometimes she will sit and watch all, like a bunch of episodes of... Lois and Clark in a row, and then uh, Kevin quipped like, uh, "So you're a master binger," and uh, I thought that was just funny. There's no equivalent to the art world, but the idea that I'm drawing—I only want to draw the costume I designed—kind of made me think of that. Anyway, yeah, she was very nice. I I sat back in the green room with her before we went on, and. Uh, I was like, oh, you know, after all the, I think I asked her, like, after all these years, like, does going on live, does it, does it still kind of, you know, I don't know what I was saying. I lost my train of thought. Really starts with the eyes. I think those eyes are fairly on point. There's the nose. And that's like a shadow that represents the midpoint from two light sources. And it gets a little thicker line because the nose is a little bulbous. So if you think of the nose as like a, a bridge, a thin bridge, and then it kind of... Uh, widens out to a ramp, the shadow is going to widen as the, the bulbous point of, part of the nose also widens. Okay. I think I, I tried to give him um, a wider mask, again, in as a nod to kind of the crab mask that he had before, and also... There was a version of Green Lantern. He was an evil Green Lantern. Um, but I think it was just the way they drew the mask back in the day. So it wasn't just that evil Green Lantern. But Green Lantern's mask back in the day was just kind of wide. It was more, it wasn't as angular. It was more like, uh, it looked like two cupcakes. It looked like, uh, it looked like this. Two cupcakes kissing. Now that I think about it, this looks nothing like two cupcakes kissing. Or the other image, in fact. Anyway, getting back to the Terry Hatcher part of it, uh, I just thought it was really cool. I don't know if it changed my, my approach or helped, but I think it's a good thing to think about because I know a lot of people have anxiety about public speaking, right? No? Uh, yeah, probably. All right, I'm done. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I could do whatever, man. It's my stream, right? I'm pretty sure. Some people might have me believe that. No. Your stream is on the left. 
Um, off center. Don't be late. Free will is an illusion. Is it an illusion? If you want to get philosophical, we can we can spend five seconds on this. Who decides what we do? All right, I've lost half the audience. Okay, all right, that's it. That's all I'm going to ask. All right, when we think, like hunger for sure, right? It's it's a, it's a what's called a biofeedback. Biofeedback? Biofeedback? Bio something feedback, all right? Wizard needs food, right? The stomach needs food. So you eat because you're hungry. You go to the bathroom because it's a biological thing. But everything else. Sex drive, of course. Um, You know, what determines if we go, hey, I'm going to go work out today. What's made that choice for you? On one hand, it's all the, uh, has to do with self-image, the culture, obviously, that you live in. Um, maybe things your doctor has told you to do. Um. Uh, but what, what, what's that thing in your head that's telling you that making that decision? We call it free will. We call that the conscious mind. But what is it? You know, the brain is just made of brain cells, neurons. firing off like processor chips in a computer I don't know okay I spent way way more than I should have on that sorry guys accumulation of instincts no because uh, I, we're we're one of the few creatures that can be altruistic, meaning someone could take literally a bullet for someone else, right? Step in line of fire, sacrifice themselves. Your instinct is to stay alive. That's your bi biological imperative. Um, very few creatures. I think they, they prove that bees, I think, are maybe altruistic uh, because they can sting you and die. I don't know. But there's something else there. And uh, I'm not f intellectually equipped to, to, to discuss this any further. If you want to learn about art, I think you have to have that approach. Maybe not. Maybe you just have to know how to draw well. something to be said though for having for being curious this is the cost of my design DC actually hired me they paid me to design this costume it's kind of fun they're like how do I get that gig rotten rock thank you very much decision that I'm drawing Edgar Skiles suggestion
है This chat existential today, yes. Where are we at? Time wise, twelve twenty-two. I always go a little over, much of the consternation of the mods. I know right now Ren is like freaking out because he wants to jump into that shower. It's not free will, ladies and gentlemen. Biological need. He too shares a very high gene set with bees. You know, that's actually an idea for a stream in the future, right? It's just pick one character and try to do as many characters from that character's set of characters. Characters. Heroes, villains, supporting characters. Obviously, Batman's been done to death, so I'd pick something different, you know. I've already drawn Suicide Squad, but, you know, maybe there's other, like, Secret Six. You know, start with the old version and then do the Gail Simone version. Or Justice Society. You can do Our, Our Man. <clears throat> you know, Captain Adam. The old Captain Adam. I always liked that character. Those guy, his superpower was that he's short and feisty. <laughs> that almost sounded like a Mitch Hedberg joke. The delivery of Mitch. I mean, not comparing myself to Mitch Hedberg, even though I just did. I'm saying it just in my head. It fired off that Mitch Hedberg thought. And that, ladies and gentlemen, makes me question what free will is because I did not direct that piece of like what just created what just happened there I'm not in charge of my own thoughts Let's see what we got here. Uh, okay. Subs, what are we... Uh, subs. Uh, mods, what are we at this week? Are we at 10? Sub 10? What are we at? I don't know. I always lose track. Love the sideburn action here. Sorry, depriving you of some wonderful brushwork here. It's like, damn it. I paid a sub fee. I want to see every brush stroke. Move that. Sh move that up. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> she saves it to the end. Although, yeah, most cultures they eat the good food first, right? It's like Chinese meals or something. They won't have. They eat the rice at the end to get. F filled up on. They'll eat the protein first. I, I'd like to eat it together, personally, but I'm like, can I please get the rice early? And they're like, why? Don't you want to fill up on the protein first? And that goes back to the ancient times, right? It's hard to get the protein. It was a luxury. Okay. How about this? In celebration of our one year stream, oh no, I already gave away a like a dozen images. I gotta send those out, so I apologize, still haven't done that. Just because it's Sunday and someone asked nicely in stream. Okay, 
12.30. Look at that. I hit the mark. <laughs> People go, no, you're late. You said five minutes. Whatever. No artist in the history of art is famous for being on time. People say Jack Kirby was super fast, and he was the fastest artist. But we love him not for his prolif proliferacy. Not, we don't we don't love the guy because he was fast. We love the guy because he created great characters and drew amazing art. Okay, so keep that in the back of your heads. But if you get a call from a DC editor and you're late on your assignment, be on time. I don't know why I could feel compelled to fix that.